China's electric car exports have grown by just under 20% in the first five months of 2025. There's three car companies leading the charge, Cherry, MG, and Geely. And there's also one more that's following close behind. Interestingly, um, this is coming in light of the fact that e EVs have these massive taxes put on them, EVs made in China. Basically, Europe has taxed them to between 30 to 50%. The United States has banned Chinese EVs, and yet their sales keep on surging forwards. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. Great to have you with us. China's electric car exports surged by just under 20%, about 19.6% year on year in the first five months of 2025. That's coming from data from the General Administration of Customs on June the 9th. Car News China says that exports of equipment manufacturing products reached 860 billion US dollars, a 9.2% increase from last year, accounting for 58.3% of the country's total exports. The export momentum was primarily led by electric cars, construction machinery up 10.7%, ships up 19%, and industrial robots up 55.4%. So interestingly, EVs and robots, they're the two areas, sectors in China's economy, two sectors of exports that are growing the fastest. Industrial robots up 55% and EVs up 20%. Cherry led domestic car automakers in China in total vehicle exports. They exported 251,000 in the first quarter of the year, 251,000. And MG, who are owned by SAIC, S-A-I-C, they were second with 160, 168,000. Now, a lot of people in Europe still think that MG is actually a British brand. But yeah, I mean, it's owned by a Chinese conglomerate. Geely was in third place, so very close behind MG with 161,000 units. That was an insane 103.3% increase. Geely at the moment this year is the fastest growing automaker in the world, and they actually tripled their profits in the first quarter of the year. They're sort of like the new BYD, I think it's fair to say. The fact that Geely's EV sales rose globally outside of China by 103.3% and in China by 150% should be all you need to know about the basically the direction that Geely is headed in. 71,000 of Geely's exports were to European car markets. So of their 161,000, 70,600 went to Europe. About 90,000, just over 90,000, went to countries outside of Europe. BYD was in fourth place, surprisingly behind Geely, with 159,300 units exported. However, a fair few of those were not electric. 61% of them were purely electric, 39% were plug-in hybrids. So as you can see, the truth is Cherry, Geely, and MG are actually a long way ahead of BYD in electric car exports. Of course, if you include plug-in hybrids, that number then does change. However, here's what Car News China says. There is relatively lower overseas demand for EVs, uh, BYD EVs, than outs, you know, outside of the domestic market. That's what they believe. Havel followed with 90,700 sales, of which 95% were traditional internal combustion engine vehicles. They achieved about 80% year-on-year growth. Chang'an was in sixth place. They exported 82,000 vehicles, but saw a sharp decline of 29% year-on-year, making it the only top-tier Chinese automaker to experience a downturn during this period. Other brands in the top 10, Ro, 48,700, Jetour, 41,500, GAC's Trumpchi, 31,000, that's up 253%, and JAC, 27,000. The top 10 exporters fell into three tiers. Four brands exported more than 150,000 units, the four brands we mentioned before, including BYD, Geely, Cherry, and, and MG, Two exported 50,000 to 100,000, and the remaining four exported fewer than 50,000 units each. Now, I should mention 
that Xpeng is hoping to join these car manufacturers soon and plans that 50% of its sales will be outside of China within the next two years. On a broader scale, China's total goods trade, imports and exports combined for January to May was 2.47 trillion US dollars. Imports and exports combined, 2.5 trillion US dollars for the first five months of the year. That's growth of 2.5%. China's exports in May rose 6.3% to 2.3 trillion yuan, which is 314 billion US dollars. So China, their exports totaled 314 billion US dollars in a single month, just in May. That was despite having two fewer working days than the same month last year. So China's exports rose by 6.3% with two fewer working days. So with about 8% less days, 8% less days and exports rose by 6.3%. So that would put them really on average per day, exports were increased by approximately 10% in May. Now you can see demand for Chinese goods is not going down, it's continuing to rise. China's trade with key partners continue to grow, exports to ASEAN or Asian rose 17%. The United to the EU rose 13.7%, to Africa rose 35%, Central Asia's five countries, 8.8%, and trade with African nations hit a historical high for this period, totaling 133 billion US dollars, with exports accounting for 83 billion US dollars, up 20%. Here's what ex analysts and experts are saying. The continued momentum in exports, particularly in equipment manufacturing and in electric vehicles and robotics, demonstrates the resilience of China's trade sector amid global uncertainty. With leading automakers expanding their global footprint, China will likely remain a dominant player in the international EV market in the months ahead. As you can see, a huge part of the reason for China's continued growth in exports is electric cars and internal combustion cars, but primarily electric cars and robotics. Those are the two things driving China forward. But one big sector that I haven't mentioned yet in this video is batteries. China's exports of lithium and now sodium as well batteries have been a huge growth area for the country. And that will continue over the next five to 10 years. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Bye-bye. Sales numbers from China's EV manufacturers have just been revealed. Some of them are doing really well. I mean, Xiaomi, 28,000 sales for the month, really good numbers. If you can't compare some of these companies like Xpeng to these American car companies, you know, Rivian and Lucid, then to be honest, it sort of makes these US companies look like they really are failing. Some car brands in China have been absolutely smashing it this year. Some have been struggling, particularly Porsche and of course, legacy automakers. However, in the month of April, we have sales figures for the biggest brands. So let's have a look at them and break them down and see which car companies are doing the best, see which ones that you know might be paying off on your investments. They might be giving you a good return based on the incredible records we've seen recently.